drive-through COVID testing in the bottom parking lot. That's every Monday and Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. There are no appointments necessary, there's no cost to you, and you should have results between 24 and 72 hours later. Our next Women's Book Club is happening on Thursday, November 19th. So it is not the last Friday of the month, but Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. This month's book is Giver of Stars. Um, if you're interested or have any questions, then you can contact Corey or the Zoom link. On Wednesday, November 11th at 7 p.m., our very own youth group alumni, Griffin Ross, is going to be putting on a Facebook Live jazz concert. Um, he is asking for donations for the concert, uh, and everything that is donated will go to Porch Hillsboro. Um, he's doing this for a school project, but it'll be really awesome to see and support him as he plays with some of his other musician friends. So check it out. Uh, it'll be on his Facebook page, and we will share it through the church and youth Facebook pages as well. Good morning, Orange family. We are excited that you are here to worship with us. If you're here in person, why don't you go ahead and stand up and we'll sing together. And if you're online with us, why don't you go ahead and take a moment to share the stream with your friends and family. Let's go ahead and worship.
no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? 
God, your word says better is one day in your courts than a thousand days here on earth. We pray that we would be able to attach to that. To separate ourselves from this earthly plane sometimes. And remember that you are where our true home is. You are where our hopes are. You are where our hearts are. you for this time to worship. It's in your holy name we thank you. Amen. Thank y'all so much for joining here in person and online. We're going to welcome up Savannah Wright, our ministerial intern, to read us our scripture now. Good morning, church. It's so great to see those of you here in person today and Technical difficulties, sorry. Um, and welcome to you guys online as well. Oh, you may be seated. That's what you meant. I'll get back up here. Let's try this one more time. Um, okay, thank you all again for worshiping with us this morning. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. And it reads, So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace in his flesh. He has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Savannah. And it's so good to be gathered together. Thank you for those that have assembled with us to worship today. And thank you for those that are worshiping with us online. As we continue through this journey of life together in the year of 2020, what a remarkable year it has been. And so we're, each week, it seems that we're having to make different adjustments, and I give thanks for the way that you as a church have been able to be flexible and to work with us each time we've had to make a different kind of transition. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord God Almighty, we thank you today for this opportunity for us to worship together. Lord, you ordered life in such a way that once a week, we might press pause might stop just for a bit. In the midst of all the busyness and chaos, we would just stop and allow the waters to still become clear once again. In that time of resting, in that time of stopping, Lord, you speak to us. You recreate us. You renew us. And so thank you, God, for this time that we're able to spend together. And thank you for the way that you speak to us. Lord, as we give thanks for your word as it was just read, we now give thanks for your word as it is to be proclaimed. And we ask that the Holy Spirit might transform the words that proceed from my mouth and as they fall upon our ears and penetrate our hearts. May they be changed into the word of God that we need to hear today, collectively and individually. Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said, amen. 
I cannot imagine going through 2020 without the technology that we have today. Technology, when it works, is awesome. You can reach all across the world. You can do all sorts of things. You can carry it in your pocket. The technological powers that were unimaginable just a few years ago. But when technology doesn't work, <laughs> it, it becomes a bit frustrating, doesn't it? We've experienced that here at the church the past two weeks that we show up for worship only to find out that our internet is down for whatever reason. And so we have been scrambling prior to the start of the service trying to figure out how are we going to still be able to get the message out to the people that aren't able to be present. And so the first time we did the best we could, we recorded the service and tried to share it later in the day. But, you know, it still wasn't just quite the same. And I remember that day calling my dad and I bet dad's watching right now from home. Good morning, dad. I'll talk to you later. But I remember calling dad, and as soon as he answered, he first of all said how much he enjoyed what he was able to see, but he let me know that he must have done something wrong, that his computer, he didn't know what he had done wrong, and he just, he just think, thought it was all himself. And I finally had to interrupt him, and I'm sorry for that, dad. But I interrupted him. I said, dad, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't you. It was, it was on our end. It was our internet was down. We were doing the best we could and trying to share that and help him to understand for all of us, when technology goes wonky, we don't know what to do. And so, so many times in my life, my mom used to call me when she was still living. Over the past few years, mom would call. And she every week, I would almost expect that, that I would get at least one phone call that would say, Son, my phone isn't working right. Or her tablet, or her computer, or her internet, or something wasn't working right. Can you help me figure out how to try to fix this? And every single time, I would tell my mom or I would ask her first, Mom, have you just turned it off and turned it back on to see if anything happens? Have you rebooted it? Have you unplugged it or plugged it back in? That was the advice that I would almost always give to my mom. And almost every time, that took care of the problem. In fact, even just recently, uh, our internet at my home went out. And so as I called the provider to tell them that the internet was out, the first thing that they asked me was, well, have you unplugged and plugged back in the router? And I was so angry because, of course, I had done that four or five times before I made that phone call. You know, in technology, so many times we have to reboot something so that it might begin to work the way it was designed to work. We have to reboot it because maybe it's taking on other functions. It's doing other things that it wasn't necessarily supposed to handle all of those things all at once. And so it requires a, a reboot, uh, even a reset. It has to be renewed. You know, in a way, I wish there was a simple button on life that would help us to be able to just reboot, reset, or renew. Because so many times it seems like we spend life so busy juggling all the bit things in our lives. And we have so much of a struggle to find the balance to life that we are seeking and really that we need. And so in the midst of trying to juggle all of those things, we might lose sight of really what's important. In fact, today I brought a few props with me to help remind us of what that's like. And for those that were gathered here early this morning, they might be a little afraid. Because let's just say we've already had one thing break this morning uh, that I might have had a hand in accidentally. And so in life, I wanted to just remind us of what it's like about us trying to juggle things. And so I brought a few props to remind me of the things we're trying to juggle. I, I brought a little uh, toy car. Is a way of reminding me that we try to juggle our family. I'm going to say that represents our family. And how many of you know how to juggle? Anybody here? Because you might be able to give me some tips. But, you know, we try to juggle our family. My two boys are now off away. One graduated, one's still in school. But we still are trying to balance life together and maintaining those contacts, those relationships. And so sometimes in the midst of life, it can be kind of busy to juggle maintaining that balance within our family. But... You know, there's other things to life other than just family. I, I'm going to say this football represents fun. 
Because, you know, you got to have some fun in life sometimes. you got to have an ch- opportunity to just sort of recharge and be uh, re-energized. And so we balance our family and our fun, and I've got it down. I'm handling this perfectly. I'm going to say, though, uh, I'm gonna, this computer mouse represents work. Because if you're going to have fun and if you're going to have a family, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to balance that. And so now I've got these three things that uh, I've got to begin to figure out how to juggle. And I can't keep two in the end there. So, so no more fun. We're not having fun anymore. Fun is off the table. But that's okay because we've got some other things. I've got a stick that represents my friends <coughs> because they stick with me. No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you in the back. So I'm going to balance my friends. I I no longer have fun because that's off the table. So I I balance my friends trying to juggle. You know what? There's one more important thing that I might want to balance, throw into this juggle, an egg. And I'm going to say that this egg, because it's so precious, is my relationship with God. And so let's see. I've already lost fun. Uh, Ben, do you want to come help? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) All right, let's see how well I balance my family. You know what? I'm scared that's going to break. Let me set that down there. All right. So, see, I'm juggling it all pretty well. And, well, there goes work. (laughs) I guess I can walk off now. No. Um, So, the thing is, when we balance so many things, when we try to juggle them, so many times the most important thing we have to set to the side. We don't have an opportunity to focus that anymore because we filled our lives with so many other things and we've lost sight of the most precious the most valuable which is that relationship with God and the way that he brings us together he makes us one we lose sight because of all the things we're trying to juggle and we forget the most important thing of all sometimes we just need to reboot and remember What God made us for. Remember who we are. As Paul is writing to the people in Ephesus, he's writing a reminder to them, especially to the Gentiles, those who were not those of uh, Jewish background and tradition who came to the faith afterwards. And he's trying to remind them that there was an important time in their lives. And for us, I think it's an important time for us to remember. As Savannah read these words just a few minutes ago, here once again from verse 12, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without Christ, God in the world. You know, I can remember there was that time in my own life when I was without Christ, that I was without hope, that I tried to balance all the things in life, and I just kept falling and dropping and falling apart. He's reminding them there was a time. Sometimes we forget that there was a time before we fully knew God, before we fully surrendered to God. I love the way Eugene Peterson puts it in the message. As he paraphrases those same words, he says, it was only yesterday that you were outsiders to God's way and had no idea of any of this, didn't know the first thing about God's works and hadn't the faintest of idea of Christ. Folks, sometimes we've been in this relationship with God so long, sometimes we've been a part of the church for so long that we've forgotten what it was like to be without it. You know, it's an important thing for us to look back and to remember what life was like before we were fully in that relationship with God. Now, some of you may not have ever been able to pinpoint a time that you didn't know these things, that you didn't know that hope In Christ, maybe you were brought up in the church. Well, I was brought up in the church, and I always knew of the love of God. But there was a time that finally came for me to finally accept it for myself, for me to claim it as my own. And that was a struggle. That was a difficult time to get to that point. And if you can't ever remember what that point was like, it's funny because I remember my granddad saying one time that he had spent so much of his life Prior to having air conditioning and then years of having air conditioning, he said, you know what? 
I can remember what it was like before I had air conditioning, but even if I couldn't, I could tell you it wasn't as good as what it is now. Folks, you have been maybe in a relationship with God for so long that you can't remember what it was like to not be. But if we look back, we can see there was a time that we didn't have that hope. We didn't cling to the promises that we cling to now. And so maybe now's the time for us to try to remember it was only yesterday, as Eugene Peterson put it, that we were outside of that relationship. We need to remember, and I remember that time we were called into this place. As Paul continued in Ephesians, another verse he reads in verse 13, he says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. See, well, we once were far off, but we are not who we used to be. We are a new creation. God has taken us, he has shaped us, he has reformed us into something new. An entirely new creation. And again, as Eugene Peterson put it, he says, you knew nothing of the rich history of God's covenants and promises and Israel hadn't a clue about what God has been doing in the world at large. But now because of Christ dying that death, shedding that blood, you who were once out of it all together are in on everything. See, there was this time that we were apart from God. But because of Christ, we have been reconciled. We have been made new. And it's been done through the work of the body of Christ. The embodiment of God in the world today. The church. It's through the church that we have come to learn to find hope. It is through the church that God has organized and brought together. That he is using it to bring hope and life to the world today. And through the church, we are continuing to help people find that he is the cornerstone of all that our lives that we're trying to juggle. And he is the foundation. Through the church, we're helping people to find that there is love that is real, unconditional in this world. And through the church, we are helping people to find their place in God's story. Today, maybe we, it's time for us to begin to renew, to reset, to reboot to shed some of those things in our lives that no longer play as an important role. Maybe it's time for us to find that focus. Once again, focusing on that relationship with God. So we have been made new so that others may find that love through God. The past five weeks, we've talked about what it means to be a member of the church. We've talked about the vows that we take when we join the body of Christ. We have talked about how we work together to support the church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And all of these things together are a part of our baptismal vows. For those of you that might be watching at home, if you haven't already done so, I want to invite you to send somebody to the kitchen to get a bowl of water, a small bowl of water. And then as they come back in just a moment, we're going to have an opportunity to renew our baptismal vows. We're going to remember those vows that were taken at our baptism. And it's the opportunity for us to hit reset, reboot, or renew. And to be reminded of the ways that we are being a part of that body of Christ. Let us pray. God, in all of your grace and mercy, you sent your son to be our hope, our salvation. Your son who taught us how to live and how to love. Your son who has made us one through him. And that was, there was a time when we had not yet known that hope which we now know. And as we look back and remember, Lord, we give thanks for the, we, the ways that we are a new creation through you. And in this time as we prepare now to remember and to renew, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us in such a way that we feel that presence and we claim that renew. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Since the earliest of times, the vows of the baptismal covenant have consisted first of the renunciation of all that is evil and then the profession of faith and loyalty to Christ. And so, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil force, powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, would you say, I do? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, would you say, I do? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, once again, would you say, I do? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, would you say, I will? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth life. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works to the nations his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call us to remembrance, the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise, praise to you, eternal, eternal Father, through, through your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. For those that are watching at home, if you have not got your bowl of water yet, we invite you to get that. We're going to take to the or we're going to invite those in the church to come forward and receive a small uh, container with a little bit of water. And then there's going to be an opportunity for us to dip our fingers in that water and just simply be reminded of our baptism to remember our baptism and give thanks. 
If you'd like, you can take some of that water and even place it upon your head just as a physical way of remembering that which has, we are a part of. And so may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through the water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to come forward, if you would, and receive the gift of water. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give, we give thanks, thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in, and in this, this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. We give thanks for this opportunity to renew that covenant together. And we give thanks for the way that we continue to be able to be a part of that cornerstone that helps people in our community and so far away find hope and find their place in God's story. Today, we invite you to give. You may give online by going to orangemethodist.org backslash give, where you can make your contribution. For those that are present here today, as you leave, there is a basket that you can place your gifts in, should you uh, choose to do that. You can also text the word orange to 73256, and there you'll receive those instructions. Hopefully, in the mail this week, you received your covenant renewal card that we spoke about in the announcement time, and we invite you also to complete that. You can fill it out and return it to the church, or you can use the website that is found on the back to safely and securely submit that information so that we can all share together in the ways that we are supporting the church through these vows. Thank you for the way that you continue to support and demonstrate that generosity. Those of you who are here, would you stand and worship with us?
may find that same hope in Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in this time of worship. Next week, if you'd like to attend in person, make sure that you go online to orangemethodist.org backslash signups, and there you'll be able to register to be able to attend. If you missed the announcements at the beginning of the service today, stay tuned to see what you missed. As we've been talking so much about covenant renewal, we want to give you the opportunity to commit to how you're going to renew that covenant and live it out through your prayers, presence, gifts, and service. You've received in the mail your covenant renewal card, and you can fill that out and return it to the church, or you can use the address that is found on the back to safely and securely do that online. Every Monday and Thursday, the church is hosting drive-through COVID testing in the bottom parking lot. That's every Monday and Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. There are no appointments necessary. There's no cost to you. 
and you should have results between 24 and 72 hours later. Our next women's book club is happening on Thursday, November 19th. So it is not the last Friday of the month, but Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. This month's book is Giver of Stars. Um, if you're interested or have any questions, then you can contact Corey for the Zoom link. On Wednesday, November 11th at 7 p.m., our very own youth group alumni, Griffin Ross, is going to be putting on a Facebook Live jazz concert. Um, he is asking for donations for the concert, uh, and everything that is donated will go to Porch Hillsboro. Um, he's doing this for a school project, but it'll be really awesome to see and support him as he plays with some of his other musician friends. So check it out. Uh, it'll be on his Facebook page, and we will share it through the church and youth as well.